Last time you guys were over, I was talking about Don Klein, and I forgot to mention how his famous call was the catch. Joe Montana to Dwight Clark in the end zone. NFC playoff against the Cowboys at Candlestick. Nice. And I was also talking about all the different players in this autograph book of my dad's that he started. He got it in 1954 for Christmas. And like I was saying, it was in chronological order. And uh, Don Klein was the first one to sign it. And the second page is Bill Russell from January 10th, Keysar Pavilion, you can San Jose State. And I think that's why in my last video I was talking about Nippy Jones. But I said Nippy Russell. Had Bill Russell on the brain. Anyway, Nippy Jones. Yes, his dad was a bit of a drinker, nicknamed Nip. Whenever he would go out on town with Little Nippy, people would say, hey, there's Nip and Little Nipper. So Nippy is what it was, and Nippy stuck. His parents divorced and raised by his grandparents. And then uh, played three different sports in high school, you know, the, the main three. Then when he was 17, his dad got back into his life and signed him to the St. Louis Cardinals. That was in 1946. I'm sorry, that was 1943. And a few months after that, in September, he enlisted in the Marines. And he was stationed at Camp Pendleton, where he became a corporal. He was a crack shot, became a rifle instructor. He would eventually end up in Pearl Harbor with his Marines 5th Division, getting set to go to Iwo Jima and hit the beach. But he was called back and... Uh, told to play baseball there in Honolulu. 80% of that 5th Division Marines was wiped out. When he got back after the war, he got called up to the bigs, the Cardinals. He played in one game with their 1946 World Series championship team. 1948 and 1949, he had a really good season. He was right up there with uh, Stan Musel and Ina Slaughter as far as uh, total bases and slugging average. And uh, at the end of 1949, he herniated his disc sliding in the, or sliding back in the first base against the Dodgers. Required back surgery, which left him paralyzed for a little while. Didn't return to playing baseball until 53, where he stayed with the salons. Sacramento salons from 53 to 1957. And then the Milwaukee Braves, Joe Adcock, I'll say it. Adcock, he uh, broke his leg sliding in the second, and the Braves needed a little help. So they bought Nippy's contract off the salons. He played 30 games with the Braves. And then in the World Series, the famous shoe polish incident, Yankees were up two games to one in that 1957 World Series. Game four, Braves are losing. It's 10th inning. Nippy's called in to pinch hit. And he's going against New York Yankees Tommy Byrne, who Nippy knows from playing against in the PCL League. He knows what he's going to pitch. And sure enough, Tommy throws just what Nippy thought. And he let the pitch go. Slid past Yogi Berra and hit the backstop. And before the ball boy could pick it up, it rolled right in front of Nippy. He picked it up, showed the ump, black mark on it, said it was from his shoe. Ump agreed, said, take your base. The rest is history. Eddie Matthews would come up to bat a few plays later and uh, hit a two-run homer walk-off. Ties the series 2-2. Two to two. And again, the rest is history. That was Nippy's last at bat as a big leaguer. You will now see Nippy's autograph. Nippy Jones. This would be 1956. By all accounts, he was a really good guy. Nippy Jones. Infamous shoe polish incident. They say... It changed the series. Never played a game after that one.
It was also said he never looked back, became a family man, 